I've been maining a shy since the class released in summer of 2019, and I get a lot of questions on whether it's worth it to roll a shy as a main life skiller. There are some pros and cons to doing so, and that's what we're going to be going over today. Let's start with the life skills first and foremost, as it's one of the first things noticed about this class. Shy inherently starts at Professional 1 Gathering and Alchemy. This can be a great boost in speed for new and existing players alike, allowing you to get an extra 155 mastery in these two life skills right out of the gate. It has a more profound effect for new players, however, as it can take a little while to get that first character up to Professional. For existing players, however, it's more of a shortcut than a necessity. She also gets some distinct passive buffs, which you don't see on any other class. Gathering Wiz and Alchemy Wiz, and its two companion skills, Joy of Gathering and Alchemy. The two Wiz skills offer up to 5% XP passively, and the Joy skills offer an additional 300% increased combat XP gained when you're doing Gathering and Alchemy. Gathering Wiz isn't as powerful as it once was, seeing as we've gotten so many new life XP buffs in the last year. 5% Gathering XP effectively brings my beginner 0 to Guru 1 time from 99.11 hours down to 97.78 hours total, saving me 1.33 hours in the long run. This really isn't a whole lot for my setup, where I have the Life Book, Old Moon, Manos, Accessories, Pets, etc. running a high of 296% Life XP. If you're running a more barebones setup of something like Value Pack, Gathering Costume, Kron, and Verdure, it can shave off almost 8 hours in total. It highly depends on your setup, and you will need to determine how much that 5% is worth to you. The same rules apply for Alchemy, although I would say that if you're looking to spend the 3000 plus hours to push G50, it is an absolute necessity for your sanity. Now onto the combat XP portion of these skills. What does it mean by getting extra combat XP? I thought we were life skilling. Well, every time you do a life skilling action, you actually gain a little bit of actual combat XP, allowing you to ever so slowly level your way up there. If you're planning on leaving your alt at 49, this section need not apply to you. If you are, however, which I believe you should in the case of being a shy, explained in the next section by the way, it does actually help. When doing alchemy and gathering, you gain an extra 300% of that small experience gain, which ever so slowly pokes you up to the higher levels. Despite 300% being a sizable number, I basically only see 0.001% XP per 13 herb gatherers at bear when I'm at level 61. It's small, but my XP is getting closer to 62 day by day. It's very minor, but it's still worth talking about. But enough with the minor things, let's talk about the reason I actually rolled a shy. Awesome costumes- <laughs> I mean wait, wait is why we rolled a shy. Many pearl items in this game can be bought from the central market, but weight and inventory expansion remain off that list. Weight can be a financial burden, especially dealing with multiple characters. Shy remains an excellent choice for both free to play and paying players alike due to its massive LT passives. Most classes at the level 60 range between 400 to 450 base LT, gaining 3 to 4 LT per level. Berserker remains at the top of this list, gaining 4 LT per level up to 446 at level 60. The Tamer also gets a passive called Fortune's Blessing, which gives you plus 25 LT and plus 50 health, giving her 425 LT at level 60. Shy, however, starts at 350 LT base and gains 5 per level up until you hit 50, where she starts gaining 15. At level 60, she will sit at 750 LT, a full 304 LT ahead of the Berserker. With level 30 strength as well, she will sit at 790 LT. You put 4 Han Gervish into your weapons, that's 1000 LT. I'll also mention the 4 LT upgrades you can get from the Loyalty Shop, which brings it up to 1200 LT total, and that's a very solid number for F2P. As a life skiller main, I value LT over most things for a few reasons. The first, more LT equals less time spent managing and juggling inventory weight. I hate spending time using maids, running to storages, and rotating processing. Holding more materials while cooking increases batch times and reduces time shuffling and storage. It can increase energy expenditure while gathering. I just find that it has such a profound effect on every aspect of my gameplay, and those are just a few of my examples. Second is quality of life. Beyond efficiency, I'm just lazy, I'll be honest. I play this game quite a few hours a day, and anything that can help make it smoother is extremely valuable to me. Number three, Imperial Cooking Crates. Seeing as a lot of us are cooks, being able to hand in 60 plus Imperial Crates at a time is really nice. And fourth, Feathery Steps. The more LT you have, the greater effect this fairy skill has. 
at 3460 LT fully buffed up, I can overstack to a whopping 4325 LT with Feathery Steps 5. That's 85 imp crates I could stack in one trip. Now if only these stupid fairies would give it to me. Enough with weight, let's talk about combat. I'll preface this by saying I've never PvP'd outside of bare herb battles, by the way, which are funny as hell to watch, nor have I ever done any PvE with more than 235 AP with a Tet Kudum. With that preface out of the way, this is my experience. My most notable experiences was with high density, low HP areas like Polys, Naga, Gahas, Fogans, etc. In comparison to pretty much every class I've ever played, she is slow. The animations are a little clunky and movement between packs can be quite awkward, and the AoE is rather small. There are things that can mitigate this, like skill add-ons and ensuring your forward roll is active at all times. W shift, L and B, R and B helps speed up movement, but it's nowhere near what I've seen of other classes. At my peak, I was getting a little more than half the trash loot as my similarly geared Kuno was getting at Polly's. These low HP areas for speed clearing are my favorite things to grind, so it's a pretty big con that she's not very good at them. Moving upwards, however, is where the Shy can start to shine. With 10 AP less than my similarly geared Kuno, I had no problem clearing Monshoms. My Kuno was struggling with HP, knockdowns, and just felt like I generally had to spam a million skills to take down a pack. My Shy, however, just breathed through it casually due to a few things. One is the naturally high HP pool. This gives you a large buffer to avoid a painful death if you do get CC'd. Second is her innate ability to hit 30 plus times with one skill. When buffed up, with 5 crit, getting back and down attacks make her extremely viable. Moving up further, with my paltry 235 AP, I was actually clearing Ackman and Histria. My drops per hour were pathetic, but the fact was simple, I could do it. It was spicy, but I actually managed to go at it for a full hour with no deaths. This is where my personal experience ends, however, and Hearsay takes over. I've heard that a Shy with very high AP is actually an astounding grinder at high HP areas like Histria and Ackman, and perhaps even Trees, Giffen, Sicrea, and Star's End. One day I'll test it myself, but judging by my experience with different classes at Monshams, I don't see why this would be wrong. As a side note, Shies are rift murdering machines. Just twirl around the boss until it dies and toss a heal if you get clipped by some CC. I cannot believe how brain dead this is. But we're not here to talk about 300 plus AP grinding, are we? We're life skillers, and 120 AP is pretty damn high, right? We did, however, need to mention some of the clunkiness of Shy's combat animations, and with Gathering, it's no different. In comparison to other classes with strong dashes and vacuums, she needs a little bit more practice to become efficient. At places with high mob density like Agris, Fox, and Sheep, we can use our taunt skill called Gather Around to taunt up to 10 mobs at once, and it'll also pull them in ever so slightly and kill them at the same time with a 15 second cooldown. That pull, by the way, brings most mobs to just within our mouse click gather range. W shift R and B when angled right will also kill several mobs as well with decent speed, and then we can use W shift L and B to travel between packs. So we'll talk about Chira first. It takes some practice. Without a fast dash, she can fall behind other classes as well as getting stuck on terrain. Small model, big problems. She also doesn't clear fast enough to warrant doing the pork, so I usually skip those in the sake of efficiency. Next up is trees. Whether you're sapping or lumbering, having no dedicated dash makes it slower. I don't do a lot of trees for a good reason. I find that sheathing the weapon and just sprinting made it significantly faster. Next is deer. I really want to like deer for the respawn times, but hot damn those boys like to wander. If you don't catch them when they're respawning, they tend to wander outside of a fat gather around click, and it forces you to do a lot of individual double killing, creating a bit of drag. All of this applies to anything else that's spread out as well. Things like the dedicated scorp rotation in the desert, and anything else I can't think about, are usually just a no-go. I just avoid them and I take my losses. My last point on whether you should roll a shy is its alt abilities. This is more for the established player, but it can be important for everyone. Family Fame is a very important part of life skilling due to its tax breaks it gives at 1000, 4000, and 7000. A Shy, when created, will automatically provide 30 life fame due to its starting at Professional 1, which is when fame is actually starting to be calculated into your total. 19 Shy characters gives you a total of 540 life fame without having to do anything at all. 
you can then use 5,955 cooking byproducts to do another 50 fame per character. You don't need to be a shy to do that last part, by the way. It's just icing on the cake. It can also be really handy if you want to do multiple gathering alts. The first thing that comes to mind is the milking minigame, seeing as it's dependent on alt rank. Professional 1 will put you immediately into the second highest bracket, making you a very potent alt to have in this scenario. Naturally, the high LT also helps quite a bit if you use alts as storage mules or anything else. And that's my list. Take all of these into account when deciding whether you want to uproot your current main. I'm a min-maxer by nature, and my strong feelings on LT made this one a no-brainer in my case. The 5% life XP is also a necessity for me too, as I'm pushing all of my life skills up for badges and rank. Every little bit adds up in my case. Keep in mind if you're re-rolling from an already fully kitted character, you're going to need to pearl buy up to 6 weight add-ons, 1-3 to three costumes for life skilling, and however many inventory slots you're going to need. You'll also need to decide if you want to transfer life skills over. It could be either pricey, or it could take you some time to accrue them off the CM. It is possible though, I did manage to snipe them all myself over time. I re-rolled everything off of my tamer onto my shy when it was released. Was it worth it for me? Absolutely. Combat isn't my favorite, and it's pretty far down my list of things are done. I life skill all day, every day, so those boosts in XP and LT are far more impactful for me. You need to decide for yourself if it's worth it in the long run, as everybody's scenario is different. Hopefully this helps you get a little closer to your decision. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys all next time.